ここまでのようだなそれはどうかな Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Horizons episode 3. If I'm with Sprigatito, I bet. Which seems like a really awkward translation if you ask me, but let's just roll with it. This was the 1235th episode of the Pokemon anime, and I thought it was a really fun next step in Liko's story. Let's break it all down. So this episode opens with a flashback of one of Liko's memories. We can see her pendant as well as who we can only assume is Liko's grandmother. She tells Liko that her time to adventure with this pendant will come and we have definitely heard her voice before in the preview trailers for Pokemon Horizons which I picked up on right away. Anyways, Liko wakes up in some spare bedroom aboard the Brave Asagi before she remembers how Sprigatito got stolen away from her. She promises to get her Pokemon back and then heads outside. She's still wearing her school uniform and she starts to interact with members of the Rising Volt Tacklers. We've already seen Orla and her role as the mechanic, and now we're getting introduced to Murdoch's role as the resident chef of the group. Molly comes in to update Liko about how Freed is tracking the explorers trying to find where they are. Liko is beginning to feel more and more assured that she can trust the rising Volt Tacklers, although we still haven't really seen her interact with Ludlow at all. And hey, is that Freed in the background? Sure enough, it is, and Freed says that the explorers are in the town up ahead, but he doesn't know exactly where. Liko wants to go and find Sprigatito immediately, but everyone tells her to calm down and that they'll work together. Freed tells us that Liko's mother actually hired them as body guards for Liko, which is some new information. The rest of the crew is mad at Freed for not explaining things to Liko, but then they all just walk off without explaining anything either. What? Cut to later that day when the Rising Volt Tagglers have docked at a port in the town, Murdoch has got his rocker up out who's gonna track the explorers by sniffing out Sprigatito's scent. Freed and Murdoch will hunt down the bad guys while Orla does some repairs to the ship, and Ludlow just fishes the day away, I guess. As for Molly, she wants Liko's help in picking up some orders from the Pokemon Center. The Rising Volt Tacklers do their signature handshake, and we're ready to set off for the day, Ludlow included. The first group we follow is Liko and Molly, but Liko is tasked with picking up the order on her own. I'll discuss this more later in the discussion section of this video, but I really like how they're introducing us to the Rising Volt Tacklers, and I'll use this moment as an example later. Liko enters the Pokemon Center to pick up the supplies, and technically Nurse Joy is the first character to return from any of the previous series of the anime, but it's not exactly a surprise to see a Nurse Joy at a Pokemon Center now, is it? Next, we jump back to the Brave Asagi, where Ludlow notices something, but before he can figure out what, his attention is diverted by a Magikarp he just hooked. What he missed was Zer, one of the explorers, spying on their airship. Now it's time for my favorite part of every episode, a Neato Thing video. This time, it's a video about Pokemon Centers, and they even point out how different Nurse Joys have different partners, but uh oh, forget about that for a second, because a girl just rushed in with an injured Vulpix. Nurse Joy promises to heal Vulpix immediately, and it was kind of awkward watching this girl walk over towards Liko. The scene lingered for a few seconds to make it seem a little off. Regardless of that incredibly minor detail that doesn't really matter, this random girl explains how her inexperience got Vulpix hurt and Liko takes this to heart since her starter Pokemon is in a bad way too. She starts to wonder if anything bad has happened to Sprigatito, which takes us right to the warehouse where Sprigatito currently is. But, uh, Sprigatito isn't really in harm's way because Konya is fawning over it like Sprigatito is the cutest thing ever. This was the first time we've actually seen any semblance of personality from any of the explorers, but Amethio is still as stone-faced as ever. Even though he did kidnap Sprigatito, he isn't exactly acting that evil, he just wants that pendant no matter what. Back aboard the Brave Asagi, Orla is using Elekid's help to restore power to the airship and they're successful in getting the wing deck to retract. Back at the Pokemon Center, that girl's Vulpix is back to full health, which means it's time for Liko to take the supplies she came for. Liko nearly drops them as soon as she walks outside, but now Molly's Chansey is there to help her. Funny that Molly is there to help out as soon as Liko leaves the Pokemon Center. Nearby, Konya just left the shopping mart with tons of food meant for her dear Sprigatito, but she's instantly caught by Rockruff, who smells Sprigatito's scent on her. Breed, Murdoch, and even Liko are right on the scene, so Konya immediately tries to make a break for it. She even pushes over a random passerby, so Murdoch tells Freed and Liko to go on ahead without him. Amethio tells Konya to lure them back to their hideout, and we see that Zer has completed his part of their mission, setting what looks like a tracking sensor underneath the Brave Asagi. Back to the chase scene, where Freed is telling Liko to stay safe and go back to the ship, but Liko isn't listening. She's 100% focused on rescuing Sprigatito. On either side of the commercial break, we just get a simple eye catch, so it looks like this series may not have the usual Derda or who that Pokemon segment, at least in the original Japanese version. Anyways, Liko and Freed have arrived at the Explorer's hideout, and Liko is intent on going inside, claiming that she's Sprigatito's trainer. Which, for some reason, is a very big moment for her, like Liko is super shocked at the fact that she's calling herself a Pokemon trainer, but more on that later. 
For now, Freed comes up with a plan, but we don't hear exactly what it is. They enter the warehouse, and I love Captain Pikachu's commitment, even walking on two feet while still keeping its arms crossed. Amethio is waiting for them inside, and Freed immediately challenges him to another battle. They agree to the terms that if Freed wins, they get Sprigatito back, but if Amethio wins, he gets to take Liko and her pendant. Freed tells Liko to step aside and stay out of harm's way, which is clearly a part of their plan. As the battle begins, Amethio actually starts to get the upper hand, landing direct damage on Captain Pikachu for the first time. It doesn't really matter though, as this battle is just a diversion to let Liko sneak away and find Sprigatito, and since Rockruff is a very good boy, it leads Liko straight to Sprigatito. She just has to break down the the locked door. Somehow this battle magically transported itself onto the roof, I'm really not sure how that happened, but it did make me laugh. This allows Liko to rescue Sprigatito pretty easily, so that's good. They try to make their escape, but are stopped by Konya, who couldn't bear to say goodbye to her cute little Sprigatito. Liko is ready for a tense showdown, but first we have to sit through Konya gushing over Sprigatito some more. This was pretty funny, and I'm glad we're starting to get a little more personality out of some of these characters. Konya is being positioned as that type of villain who actually has a mushy side, and I'm glad to see that one of my favorite traits from Team Rocket is getting carried over to Pokemon Horizons. Konya is ready for a battle, but so too are Liko and Sprigatito, who claim that they'll figure a way out of this. Ligo calls for Leafage, and it's not as powerful of a Leafage as we saw in the last episode, but it does whip up quite the barrage of leaves, and they use the cover of this attack to make their escape. Back on the roof, Freed looks like he's backed into a corner, at least that's what Amethio thinks. Freed knows what he's doing though, as the Leafage comes flying up to the roof. Our resident battling professor hops onto Charizard's back, retreating for now. Amethio realizes that this was their plan all along, and I'm actually kinda surprised that the explorers were so easily outmaneuvered in this episode. In fact, we don't even see them give chase, we just cut back to the Brave Asagi later that day where Liko and Sprigatito are reflecting on what's happened to them. This was when Liko explains more about her becoming a Pokemon trainer, tying this back to that memory of her grandmother we saw at the beginning of this episode. Liko has been able to take the very scary first step in her adventure, and it's all thanks to Sprigatito for giving her the courage to do so. Liko even claims that she found a new, <laughs> wait for it, she said the thing, Horizon. Anyway, she meets back up with the Rising Volt Tacklers and tells them all that she trusts them. They share a funny exchange where Freed is like, how come you didn't trust us before? And Liko very very accurately states that they just carried her aboard this airship without telling her anything. But now she wants to learn more about her pendant and why the explorers are following her, so she asks to stick around with the rising volt tacklers. Freed approves of this, saying that's been the plan this whole time. He explains that they want to solve the mysteries of the Pokemon world, that's the mission statement of the rising volt tacklers. Liko is like, oh really, that's what you guys are all about? So Molly and Orla are like, of course she didn't trust us, Freed, you didn't tell her anything. Of course we see like some shady gang. Putting that aside for now, everyone reaches out their fists, and Liko does their secret handshake along with them, thus joining the rising volt tacklers. And don't worry, this includes Ludlow too, who still does the handshake all on his own. And with that, Freed sets a course to Paldea, where they'll meet back up with Liko's mother. Later, Liko is talking to Anne over the phone, and she says that she's going on an adventure, so she may have to attend school remotely for the time being. Anne just hopes that Liko finds what she's looking for, and if Sprigatito is by her side, Liko bets she will find it, whatever it is. The episode comes to an end with a quick scene of Roy. Finally, he gets introduced, and he happens to find the flag of the rising volt tacklers, which got knocked off their airship during the storm. The show leaves us hanging on that connecting thread, and we'll have to wait for the next episode to see where this leads our heroes. But wait, before I can end my recap of this episode, I have to mention the ending. Oh my gosh, this was spectacular. I was not expecting the ending to be the Rising Volt Tackler's rap. This was hilarious and I loved it. Aside from the sheer entertainment that this ending brought me, I think it's at least worth mentioning that this ending did feature Paradox Pokemon as well as Hisuian form, so I wonder if and when we will run into those in Pokemon Horizons. Okay, now let's get to my discussion and episode rating. We're only two weeks into Pokemon Horizons, but I'm already so excited about this new series. I think it's off to an amazing start, and I cannot wait to see what happens next. It helps that every episode is followed on directly from the last one. It's no shock that the beginning of a new series is pretty much maximum excitement at every turn, and I hope they can keep this momentum going for as long as possible. Just to switch things up, I'll get my episode rating out of the way nice and early, then I can explain why I rated the episode the way I did. So, I'm giving this episode an 8.5 out of 10 rating. I have almost no complaints about what happened. It's 
It's just that this episode maybe didn't reach the exciting heights required to get a 9 or above, but that will come in time. I'm actually really confident that this series will be reaching its full potential, and it's because of how they're handling the storytelling and world building so far. I mentioned this earlier, but the way they are introducing new characters to us has been really well done. I'm guessing many of you are familiar with the term show, don't tell, which basically means that instead of telling us something directly, the video, show, movie, or whatever form of media it is just lets things play out naturally, trusting its audience to pick up on the important details on their own. Let me go through some of the details we learned in this episode about these new characters. Beginning with Freed, he comes off as cool, calm, and collected when under pressure, although he can be absent-minded at times, really reminiscent of Ash if you ask me. However, Freed is even smarter than Ash. Did you notice during his battle with Emethio, Freed kind of asked this question as bait, and Emethio takes it hook, line, and sinker, revealing a piece of information to Freed. He manipulated this information out of Emethio, and Emethio picked up on this immediately, which was obvious by the way he reacted and then cut off that conversation, going back to the battle. Sticking with Emethio, he's still the biggest mystery of any character that we've been introduced to in these first three episodes. The explorers are painted as the bad guys, but we don't know their true intentions. They didn't harm Sprigatito, and Emethio agreed to fight Freed fairly, so they're not ruthless villains by any means. Konya had easily the most pronounced character moments. This was the only time the show hit us over the head with explaining what a new character was like. Her soft spot could only be matched by Murdoch, who is clearly a big softy for cute Pokemon like Rockruff. Yeah, I think we all kind of predicted that Murdoch was going to be this big guy with a tough exterior, but a heart of gold just under underneath that surface. Another prediction I had was that Molly is actually part of the Nurse Joy family, and that was hinted at during this episode too. Not directly, but it was definitely fishy how Molly refused to go into the Pokemon Center with Liko. My best guess is that she doesn't want to be seen with Nurse Joy, but we'll have to wait for the full story on that one. I'll stop there for now, I could honestly go through and break down what we've seen from every character so far, but I think you all get the point. Pokemon Horizons is doing an excellent job of showing, not telling, when it comes to introducing us to these new characters, and I absolutely Absolutely love it. This review is already going on longer than I anticipated, but that just goes to show how engaging the start of Pokemon Horizons has been. I'm buzzing about the beginning of the series, and it just has so much potential. I can't wait to see what happens next. I wonder if Reed and Amethia will ever finish one of their battles. We know these groups will meet again one day, especially with the explorers planting that tracking device on the Brave Asagi. Again, they didn't spell this out for us that they'll be following the rising Volt Tacklers, but the show is trusting their audience to pick up on these key details on their own. Let's move on to the preview for the next episode, and this preview showed us that the Liko show is finally about to become the Liko and Roy show, which is what we've been expecting from the beginning. I'm not sure if the Foikoko that Roy's going to find is the one who's been living on the Brave Asagi, but it looks like Roy is about to find his partner Pokemon and then join the rising and Volt Tacklers, with a few twists and turns along the way. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next episode review, and don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, it really helps me out a lot. Let me know down in the comments if you're enjoying Pokemon Horizons as much as I am, and I'll see you guys next time.